Hello Brighouse High School and welcome to this, our remote learning lesson for GCSE PE on the skeletal system. For this you will need a pen and a piece of paper, so if you haven't got that already, stop the video now, go and grab the equipment you need and then restart the video when you're ready. This lesson is hopefully going to allow us to achieve two things. The first is being able to identify the names of the major bones of the human body. And secondly, we're going to try and explain where these are located. So, our first task is to identify the names of the major bones. And this is where you'll need your pen and paper. In the boxes below, we have 21 major bones listed. What you need to do is try and identify which of those boxes are actual bones and which of those are not. There are actually 206 bones in the human body, but we don't need to know all of them. We just need to know the 21 listed below. But as I say, we've thrown in a few bodily organs. We've also thrown in a few muscles in there. So you've got to try and decipher which is which. You can pause the video now, and then once you've made your list of 21, press play again, and we'll see how you did. So... Now you've made your list of 21, you can kind of check if it's been correctly identified. In the red and the orange boxes are the 21 bones that you need to know. Those in blue are either muscles or organs, which is something you'll come on to further in your course. I'm also going to list them off verbally so you know how to pronounce each of the bones, which is going to be helpful for when you come back to school. So starting in the top left hand corner, we have the sternum. Then the ulna, humerus, clavicle, mandible, cranium, coccyx, tarsals, metacarpals, femur, vertebrae, patella, fibula, pelvis, metatarsals, carpals, ribs, tibia, radius, scapula and phalanges. So now hopefully you've identified the major bones of the body, we've got to move on to our next objective, which is explaining where they are located in the human body. Around this skeleton in front of you, we have the major bones located. What you now need to do, again, using your pen and paper, is draw a brief skeleton which mirrors the one on your screen, and then see if you can identify where these bones are located using the list around the outside. If you do that now, you can pause the video and then again, we'll see how well you did. So, let's see if you correctly identified where these bones are located. Starting in the top left hand corner with the cranium, the cranium is the top of the skull and the cranium is what keeps our brain nice and protected from any kind of collisions. The mandible you would probably often refer to as the jawbone and this is the lower part of the mouth which moves up and down which allows you to eat, allows you to talk. The ulna is one of two bones located in the lower arm and it's important you get these the right way around. If you stretch your arm up to the side the ulna is the bone that is underneath the radius, if you still have your arm outstretched, is the bone on top that's in line with your thumb. So just to recap, ulna is underneath, begins with a U, that's how we always remember that, and the radius is on top. Moving on to the clavicle, the clavicle is a bone you would often refer to as your collarbone, and that stretches across the top of your chest. The scapula is actually behind, and again, it's something you would often refer to as your shoulder blade, but we refer to it as the scapula. The sternum is the breastbone connecting the ribs at the centre of your chest. The vertebrae are individual bones that stand on top of each other that create the vertebral column or the spinal column. The coccyx, quite a prehistoric bone, is located at the base of the vertebrae and behind us. The femur is the largest bone in the human body 
and this is located in the top part of your leg. Interestingly, the fear being the largest bone, the smallest bone is found in your ear. The patella, often referred to by uh, everybody as the kneecap, that's the patella. And moving over, phalanges, these are the smallest bones in the foot, located at the end of the foot. Metatarsals, these are the, just become these are found just before the phalanges on the foot and are found on top. And then the tarsals are found just behind those, more towards the ankle area. The fibula, we have two bones in our lower leg. The fibula is actually behind another bone. And you probably can't feel your fibula, okay? But it's down in the lower shin area. And this is because the tibia is the one that you primarily feel. So similar to the ulna and the radius in your arm, the fibula is behind, the tibia is in front. The pelvis is right here, which is a large collection of bones. And the pelvis is what you would probably refer to as your hip. We then have ribs, which probably most people are aware of. The humerus is the bone between your shoulder and your elbow. And then we move up to the hand area now. And you'll probably see that the hand bones are quite similar to the names of the bones in the feet. We have the carpals within the wrist area. We have the metacarpals, which are in the hand area. And again, the phalanges, the same name as the toe bones, which are found on the end of the fingers. So hopefully you managed to explain or correctly identify where these bones are located in the human body. Right, moving on to a bit of specialist information now. We'd like to look at the vertebral column because there's some information that you need to be very aware of when it comes to the vertebral column. This is a very important and specific group of bones that work together and it is made up of 35, 34, sorry, 34 separate bones called vertebrae. Now each vertebra is given a specific code to identify them. You don't need to know that, however. But they are essentially divided into five regions based on their function. So we have the cervical vertebrae, the thoracic vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae, and then we also have the sacrum vertebrae and the coccyx vertebrae that I've grouped together there at the bottom. And each of them play a very important role. As you can see here, just a quick diagram, each of them are labelled, so starting at the top where the cervical vertebrae is, C3, C4, C5, thoracic vertebrae goes into TH to stand for thoracic, obviously, L1 to L5 is the lumbar, and then obviously the green and the purple area encapsulate the sacrum and the coccyx vertebrae. So, finding out what they actually do, so if we're starting at the top towards the neck area, the cervical vertebrae this connects and supports the head, so it allows you to bend your head forward and back, twist it left and right. The thoracic vertebrae, which has the most bones in it, is located in the chest region, and this is what your ribs are connected to at the back. There's very little movement in this area, really, only what's required for you to breathe in and out. The major movement in the vertebral column comes from the lumbar, so the part of your spine, which is below the ribs, but connected down towards the pelvis area. And these are the large vertebrae, and they allow you to perform powerful twisting and bending movements. So anytime you bend over in spot to pick something up or reach for something, this is what allows you to do that. And then we come down to the sacrum vertebrae and the coccyx vertebrae. And these are basically one solid massive bone. And this fuses the vertebral column down into the pelvis. Uh, and obviously it's there for, for foundations to allow everything else to work. So that's the vertebral column and you'll need to know things about the vertebral column, so that's important. So let's do a bit of a quick recap, see if we know more and remember more. Quick test then. Can you label and spell correctly the major bones of this skeleton? Pause the video, see if you can just verbally go through the 21 bones and where you would find them. Can you identify the five regions of the vertebral column? And can you explain the function of each region? Again, pause the video, use the different coloured sections to identify the name of the region and what it's there to do. And lastly, a couple of bonus questions. I did mention how many bones are in the human body collectively. 
not just the 21 we focus on. How many are there? What's the smallest bone in the body? I also mentioned that earlier. And what is the largest bone? If you guys are comfortable with all the content that you've heard and read in here, then Miss Heptonstall will shortly release the next challenge task which links to this and you'll do fantastically well. Thank you very much and have a good day.